If you use a note-taking app that uses text backend files and use Git to sync between multiple devices like Logseq, Obsidian or other note-taking apps, then it isn't a question of if but more when you will have a merge conflict resulting in you losing some notes. Unfortunately, one of the reasons for making this video is that my conversion in Logseq went horribly wrong. It was a complete mess where my whole database was taken through the blender. Luckily, the conversion is also a single change and as such easy to restore if you know how. I'm going to show you why this happens, what you can do to get those notes back and allow you to sleep a little better knowing that anything you put inside a Git system never truly gets lost. Logseq uses Git as a backend and this is good because Git is an open source solution to keep track of changes inside text files. In fact, most of the software you're using probably has its source code in Git, showing you that it's used for very, very important files the world over. And the first thing that you need to know about Git is that it doesn't really store files. What Git does is it stores changes and it stores any change you make and it will never ever forget. At least you can, but it's really difficult. Proven point is that if anybody writes code and just accidentally drops a password into Git, that usually means that you have to change the password because it will stay in the history of Git forever. And that means that anything you add and anything that you remove is kept and will never truly be lost. Nine out of 10 times when you're using a Git backend and you can't find your change, you can recover it from here and I will teach you how. Now, if Git is so wonderful, why would you lose data or notes? And that happens because Git is what is called decentralized. So the whole history, all your notes, anything that you kept track of, is kept everywhere where you access it. So if you have it on multiple devices, say on your phone and on your laptop and in the cloud, then each one of those has a complete copy and they can make changes locally. Meaning that if they are syncing up, Git has to look at both your changes and try to guess how to put them together. And sometimes that doesn't work out. So you have like a change in the same file and Git looks at two lines and things like this large chunk of important notes that you made is probably the thing that you remove to change it with this one liner that you type half when you were quickly going on your phone. And the end result is that when you open it later, you look and you see like this one short line that you typed on your phone, but you no longer see the long form notes that you made on your laptop. But as said, Git never forgets. So there is somewhere in Git a point where it says like, I changed this file by removing this and adding that. And we're gonna find that. So how to get that change back? Now it's gonna be a little bit technical. And if you've never worked on a command line or with code or Git before, then you might figure out if you're that, but no worries, I'm gonna simplify this down. I'm gonna put links in the description. You'll be able to do this in no time flat. Step one is finding that change that was lost in the history of time. And to do so, I'm going to make a accidental change in Logseq because I'm not gonna try and simulate a conflict between Git. But I had to do this a couple of times because I lost notes. So don't worry about it. This will happen eventually. And the procedure is exactly the same. Now, if I look in my Logseq, I've put in a small example here. And this Git repository for Logseq is publicly available because I don't put any personal data in there. So you can check this out after the video yourself. And I'm going to remove this bit, say goodbye to it and wait for Logseq to sync. And then it feels like, oh my God, it's gone. But where did the change go? And to see where the change went, we're going to GitHub to look at the source code of this note. So we're going to GitHub and I'm going to my repositories and there I see the logseq demo. And if I open that one, then on the side we see eight commits. Now this isn't that much. If you look at a regular logseq set like my personal set, then you see that those commits really start adding up. And what we see here is eight commits. Now if it's only eight commits, commits and not 2000, then it's pretty trivial to go through it. I click on the commits and these are all the changes I made. And then chances are that removing what we just did is the last change we made. So if I click on that one, I see this and the wrap means that it got removed. So I know this is the change I'm looking for. Now, this is easy because there's only one commit, but you might need to go over a larger set. So what you can do there is if you know in what file this change is missing, 
I can go there. So if I go to journals and then pick today's journal, and I go to the same history tab here, which is basically the commits, then you will see changes, but only for that specific file, probably being a lot shorter than those 2000 commits I had in my Logseed repository. And then it's still probably one of the top ones. You didn't lose it months ago. You probably lost it in the last week. And because there's a timing in it, you can make a rough estimate on where your change is going. Now, the one thing that you need to restore this is this has a unique identifier and it's at the top is this huge number that that's over there. So we're gonna copy that one and put it on the clipboard and we're gonna need it later. Unfortunately, you can't restore it straight on GitHub. You need to check out the code as it's called. This basically means that you make a copy of the code on your local system where you make changes. And once you think everything looks right, you push those changes back so you can keep working on your stuff. Now, if you don't have the software, you can just install it by searching for Git. And the first thing that you'll get is the Git website where you can find a huge download button and then pick your own OS. So you can go towards Windows or Mac if you're running that. And in Linux, you probably just wanna use your package manager. Click on that, run the setup, and you'll have Git installed on your system. Now, there are a lot of questions when you're installing Git, but the same defaults are what you need. There is one important setting, and that's this screen where you pick the editor. Be sure to pick something like Notepad. Now, Git is a command line tool, so you don't really start it as an application. It's something you can type in when you're working on the prompt. We'll get to that later. So now what we need to do is get a copy of our notes locally. And the way we do that is we go to GitHub and we find the clone URL. So if you go here in the top, you see the green button called code. And if you click on that, it says clone. Now you can use SSH like I would do, um, but we're gonna use HTTPS because it's easier because you just type in your name and password. And for HHS, you need to set up keys and that will make it more complex than it needs to be. So I'm picking that one and I'm copying this one. Now I use a clipboard manager, so I got both of these things on my clipboard now. If not, open something like Notepad or anything like you use for a scratch pad and just paste these URLs and IDs in there so you can easily access them later. We're going to use the Windows command shell and in Mac you're going to have the terminal and in Linux you're also going to have the terminal and in all cases the commands largely stay the same. If it's not the case I will mention it. And if you've never worked on a terminal the most important thing that you'll need is the cd command and cd stands for change directory. So with cd you can go towards a folder. Now I'm currently on the C drive and if you happen to have your checkout or your code or your documents on another drive in Windows you can switch to that by typing the drive. So again the D gets me to D and C gets me back to the C drive. And within this I made a folder called projects and then I go in there and I'm going to make a temporary directory because I probably already have it checked out here and that would confuse everybody. So let's call this one demo YouTube and I'm using the mkdir command which stands for make dir. You don't need it for this one but you might want to know it if you want to make a temporary folder to try this in. Right so I'm in my temporary work directory and this is where I'm going to do the git clone bit. So I type in git which is the git command and if I press enter I get a lot of help and text. We're not going to bother with that. We're just going to focus on the two or three commands we need to restore our notes and forget the rest because we're not trying to make a large development setup here we're just trying to get a clone and i'm gonna paste the thing that i got from github and this basically says like you're gonna make a clone and you get it from github.com and it's this specific repository this is important so we hit enter and it gets a copy now normally this will ask you for a username and password but because i've been using git all the time it has already stored my github username and password so i don't get the question you just get a pop-up it just says like username you type it in and it says password and you type it in so i'm using cd to get into this directory and if i use there there i see the files that were made this is basically the same thing that you see in explorer except in text instead of nice folders with text under it so it shows journals and if i do it there on that one, it shows me the one markdown file. There's a lot of fluff around it. Um, you can't really be helped on that one. It takes a bit of getting used to. Just take your time, read the screen. You'll get through this. It's not as hard as it looks. And if you don't care about it, 
I'm just gonna show you how to restore it without having to browse through the file. Now, if all you care about is restoring the change you made and you already had that long ID string from GitHub, then what you can do is a git revert and then paste that press enter. And what that does is Git doesn't forget. So you don't go back in versions. All it does is it adds another change on top that says this change that I made in the history of my files, reverse that. So just do the change in reverse, meaning that if something was removed, it gets added. If something was added, it gets removed and it adds some text to it. And this basically tells you what's there. All you need to do now is just save this. I'm going back to the terminal and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say git push and git push tells git to push the change towards github. So I do this command and it shouldn't ask you for a password anymore because the first time you typed it in it saved it and if we go to the browser we will see that change there. So I'm looking at it now and it says eight commits. And if I refresh the page, then you see nine commits. And if I click on the commits, you also see revert log sec auto save. And that means that you reverted that change and whatever code was there should be back. So if I go look and log seek in this case, my change has magically returned. If you enjoyed this, you might like my other log seek videos and remember you're awesome. Keep it up.